Well, today we have a bit of a gray, gloomy day. And in my mind, it's the perfect day to go out and slip bobber over some shallow structure for early summer walleyes. Let me give you a couple of equipment tips that will help make your next slip bobbering adventure for walleyes more successful. Today we're fishing near some artificial fish cribs. These cribs sit in about eight feet of water and they rise three or four feet off the bottom. To keep my bait out of trouble, I set my bobber stop such that my bait is suspended right around the tops of those cribs. You may see that I'm using a real high visibility line here. I really like high vis line for a lot of walleye applications. And on a very stained lake like this one, I have no concerns about the walleyes being line shy. In my mind, the most important part of this equipment equation is my slip bobbering rod. First, let's consider rod length. For slip bobbering walleyes, you wanna select a rod that is seven and a half to eight feet long, so you can move a lot of line when you set the hook. Next, let's talk about rod action. You wanna select a rod with a fair amount of tip flex, flex that extends into the midsection of the rod. That fast action of the rod is gonna act as a shock absorber when you get that big walleye boat side, but he makes one last deep diving, head shaking run. Finally, let's consider rod power. I prefer a medium or a medium light power slip bobbering rod. That gives me the strength I need to deliver a good positive hook set without making me feel like I'm fishing with a broomstick all day. All of those rod attributes come together in this St. Croix Legend Tournament seven foot six inch medium light power fast action rod. This is the rod that I reach for first when it's time to slip bobber some walleyes and it'll make a great addition to your walleye rod arsenal. 